here actually for about 10 minutes in, oh. the, uh, in the break and uh, obviously enjoying being back on the Baker program and uh, you know obviously he said that they needed to sort some things out for him to get back there but uh, obviously moving in the right direction and uh, yeah he's going to be working on that two months out from Anaheim anyway the 15 second board up five we, second board all here turn we go. and uh, look at that uh, Roxon Tomac uh, sorry Roxon Muscan Tomac in the first three gates and then Webb alongside them six minutes or well, eight minutes plus a lap the second SX2, uh, SX1 sprint race, and this time Tomac around the outside, and it's Roxon and Tomac who share the Oxmodo sprint, but heading down into the second turn, Tomac gets out on top, Roxon right there behind him, he was blisteringly fast yesterday in the whip section in the final race, and he closed down a four second gap to 0.9 as they hit the line at the end of the 12 minute plus a lap yesterday, and he's right on the rear wheel of the Yamaha rider who this uh, in this second race, is the up front for the first time this afternoon. Be interesting to see if Ken Roxon can reel him back in and make that pass again. I would argue that last night Ken Roxon was maybe slightly better than Eli Tomac. Well, they're tied now with two to go, two mains to go. So we'll see what happens now. The the real real stuff's going to go on now. Look at that whoop speed by Ken Roxon. Yeah, look at that. He has to. He's been taken to the outside there. These two absolutely bar to bar as they head into, and he was off balance there. The two right on, he just responds immediately. Fantastic move back from uh, Kenny Roxon. Tomac thought he'd outsmarted him at the end of the start straight there, and the two almost came together. Roxon off balance into the next corner, somehow managed to get it back on two wheels and, and you know, went for the jugular. And Kenny, as he stays like this, will take over the King of Paris uh, title chase. Yeah, absolutely. Great racing by Ken Roxon right there. Out of shape to make it a pass for the lead. That's only what the elite guys can do. And that was pretty cool to watch. Cooper Webb third, Marvin Muscan fourth, Justin Brayton fifth. And uh, we'll see those guys go at it for the rest of this race. Shorter race, like Paul mentioned, so we're not going to see a lot of separation between these guys. Brayton certainly pretty fast in the whoops. Uh, he's moving up on Marvin. So Eli Tomac, can he recover? He wasn't able to salvage anything. It was a similar pass at the end of the start straight yesterday that uh, he moved on Kenny yesterday, wasn't it? And obviously couldn't come back from that. That was in the second race, I believe. But all of a sudden, Cooper Webb, maybe with some suspension settings, maybe the drier dirt is just helping him out a little bit here as well. Yeah. yeah Going after Tomac, and he was all over the back of Tomac in the latter stage of race one. So he's obviously picked his pace up to match Tomac's today. Absolutely. Sprinting away from him. Look at that whoop speed. That's great. That's fantastic to watch these guys do that. Oh, <laughs> Cooper Webb gets a little <laughs> buck wild in there, hits the front, drops the front end a little bit. That's going to, you know, scare you a little bit. There's no doubt. And you have no choice but to keep it pinned at that moment as well, because if you do shut off, walks drop, yep. game over. Absolutely. So, yeah, we'll see if uh, Marvin Muscan here, who was impressive third place there in the last one, can, uh, can get, or second place, sorry, can get into the mix again a little bit. Justin Brayton looks like he's gaining a little bit in the, in, the, uh, in the whoops, which is not surprising right now, but Marvin and Cooper are better today. Eight points, Kenny Roxon. Nine points, Eli Tomac. Twelve points further back, uh, Cooper Webb. Or 12 off the lead. He's on 20. He is in that battle with Muscan and, and Brayton, isn't he, for the third place in this uh, overall classification. But tell you what, Brayton all over the back of Muscan. Absolutely. Brayton riding really well here. And, and Cooper Webb separated himself a little bit. So, yeah, Cooper Webb maybe find a little, uh, maybe the interview gave him a bit of uh, good juju or something there, Paul. Uh, he's welcome to come back between uh, race two and three if he wants. <laughs> You know, I made mention last night about the blue gear for Justin Brayton, so I brought that theory up to him, and he said, yeah, it was absolutely crazy. He had ripped his gear in the crash, and that's why he changed. Yeah. So that was it. That was it for my theory. I saw him actually sign the shirt, give the shirt away to somebody, you know, ripped. Uh, right. Arm was almost hanging off of it, you know. Yep. Uh, here he goes down the inside of Muscan. He's got the inside line in the turn just as he needs it as well, and Muscan almost gave it to him there, almost stood up in the pegs and went, okay. You have it. Yeah, absolutely. I think Marvin knows who the better guy in the whoops is, right? If JB can get Cooper Webb, that'll be pretty impressive here. We got four minutes to go. And right now, that was probably Justin Brayton's best lap, 43-7 last time around. Uh, puts him second uh, fastest right now. And we'll see what he does this lap here. And right now, uh, Tomac looks like he's reeled in Kenny a little bit. Yeah, so one, one yeah. second back. Only a second back with his fastest lap of the race as well, 43-2, 6 10, Well, more than that, actually. Yeah. Yeah, Eli fa Eli's fastest quick lap there was 43-2. Brayton is not, didn't set his fastest lap there, 43-7 for that time around, but Cooper 44-1. So 410s quicker 
uh, Justin Brayton was than Cooper Webb. If we do the math right now and the gap, three minutes to go, it looks like we're going to get a good race here if, if JB can keep pushing. 320 plus a lap. The top two throughout the whole weekend, Roxon and Tomac, in whatever order you want to put them, are dominating this race once again. If you put the flag out now, and this is the final race, let's say, then, of course, uh, Roxon would be crowned King of Paris for the first time. Eli think, Tomac is going for his second title, though. I think if you're Cooper Webb right now and you're this much improvement on day two, uh, you got to be pretty happy with everything that's been going on. I, I, I don't think last night they were even close to being on the pace of the leaders. And the number two, the two-time 450 Supercross champion, he's hanging in there as we look at Cedric Superross, who had a big one today in practice. Huge. Huge. I'm glad he's out there, and he's glad, glad he's okay. Yeah, and he's uh, recovering well for sixth position at the moment, so pretty much probably where we expected him to be with the, the five guys ahead of him, Roxon, Tomac, Webb, Brayton, Muscan, possibly expected to be in those top five positions. Time ticking away, two and a half to go. Roxon coming up to lap Alex Ray here, who is just trying to complete all the laps. That's all we want him to do. And uh, he's moved over. He made it easy for Tomac and Roxon. Good for A Ray. Yeah, gap going out to 1.8 seconds, uh, 1.6 seconds again. So a good response this from Roxon, even though, yeah, it was 43.5, 44.3. Doing exactly what he needs to do and gaining in confidence. And actually, I spoke to him this morning. He said he was a little bit sick, actually. He was already getting sick. We got Ryder down in the finish line area. Big wave yellow, so I'm not sure who's gone down there off the side of the track. Crawling his way. Uh, Just out of our window. I believe that is uh, Ramette. It looks like it may be Ramette, Thomas Ramette. French rider is down. Uh, the visor is all kind of uh, broken, and he's holding uh, probably not one, but both wrists and arms there as well. But uh, obviously, you can't roll the finish line. You just got to be. Oh, you, well, you, it's one of those, isn't it? You, you try to, but it, see how steep it is. You yes. can't just drop off the end of it. No. So you've just got to drop onto the top. Yeah, bike park there. So I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but uh, didn't end well for Ramit. And Brayton was a little quicker again that lap on the number two, so we'll try to get eyeball this gap a little bit. Oh, yeah, one minute, ten seconds to go. Justin's going to need some help to make this pass, but he's definitely reeled in Cooper Webb right now, and that's that's pretty impressive considering uh, it was a late race charge like that. Talking of late race charges, Tomac all over the back of Roxon once again. It was 1.018 seconds at the end of the previous lap. We're about to hit the line at lap nine. Oh, and he loses the front, gets on the gas, has a little bit too much, loses that advantage. It's 1.08. Just as he was reeling him in. How much is the sickness going to play into this? Well, so far, not a lot. He's still able to skim across those whoops. And I was talking to the Yamaha manager today as well, and he said, actually, Eli, not a fan of soft whoops, and uh, the, dry, the ground dries out. That should favor him, and they're a little bit smaller as well, should favor him. But then, you know, Kenny has been solid. Yeah, I was, I was talking to John Tomac earlier, and I said, is, the track, is Eli saying the track is dried out much? He said, no, he hasn't said anything. Boy, Brayton made the move on Webb, couldn't make it stick, and then Cooper clanks that next rhythm, and we got a race for third, and we got a race for first going on here. And look at this, nine seconds on the clock as they hit the line, so it's going to be two laps from now. Are they going to be two big laps for Tomac? Is Roxon going to be able to hold him off there and take the win, the second win of the day, and oh. take advantage at the top of the championship, the Paris Championship standings? Wouldn't it be cool, Paul, to ride whoops like that? Oh, absolutely. Wouldn't it be awesome? I rode some in my sleep last night. Oh, okay. and, uh, you know, but uh, yeah. yeah, they were a breeze, you know, easy. Oh, and uh, Webb and uh, Brayton going at it. This has been a battle for a oh, few laps. Oh, nice. Times. Good combination through there. Brayton takes him, moves into third. So that's an important uh, part of the King of Bercy title. That would have put Bruce Brayton into the third place spot. So yeah. that's a big change right there with one to go from here. Good ride for the number 10 Moto Concepts. Or I should say Honda Genuine. Honda Genuine here. This weekend, yeah. Into the final lap, nothing in it between these two. Is there gonna be a chink in the armor? Is there gonna be one last push from Tomac through the woods? You're Kenny Roxon and you're going through that whoop section and you know that you're the fastest rider through there and you've got a guy breathing down your neck half a wheel apart. It's almost a, a relief to find those whoops, isn't it? And uh, just attack them and go, yep, there's a couple of bike lengths. Yeah, you know JB feels pretty confident in those things. Here we come up. One more turn to go for Ken Roxon, Eli Tomac, trying to make it happen. Yeah, final turn over the uh, little dragon back, and Roxon makes it two in a row. Eli Tomac second. That changes the course of the overall standing as well, because Tomac 
will drop to second. All of a sudden, the pressure on Roxon now will lead this series for the first time. We are set up for an exciting third uh, SX1 final. That's going to be great. Yeah, good ride that from uh, Super Ass as well. Anthony Bordon, Gregory Render, Julian Rosali, and Maxime Dupre will round out the top 10 ahead of Kevin Moran's Joan Cross. Here's Kenny Roxon getting ready to talk to our guys down there in a moment. Be interesting to hear what he has to say. 